Okay, I believe it is recording now, but I'm also like, I've got it going on like a bunch of other things. <laughs> uh, redundancy? Just in case. Yeah, yeah, just in case. I don't know what's going to happen. But anyways, it, uh, it was Omateo, right? Yeah, Omateo, which is yeah. how I, that's how I tell the the Westerners. It's really Omateo. The Westerners. Okay, well, I mean, I'll probably just start at that point, but yo, welcome back to the pod. I'm here today with Glory <laughs> Omateo. I just learned how to nail that depending on where did I decide to start. <laughs> This episode, and for those of you watch, this is the first episode on uh, Zoom. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes. This is the trial run. Hopefully, the audio quality should come through pretty great, but we'll see about how it'll sync and all that stuff. But anyways, with me today is Glory Almateo. One more time, I'm doing that. How are you? I appreciate you sticking through me trying to figure out Zoom and all this stuff. No, of course. I mean, I get it. Zoom is like the podcasters. Uh, tool right now so it's hot. everyone's yeah, it trying to figure out how it works yeah literally just so. a little backstory the reason we even know each other is i did your uh, you had me as a guest on your 20 something pod where the topic was is pod. friends racist yes. yeah so i did a little blurb on that well that, was that wasn't really the topic fun. but it's why was, black people hate friends okay i mean it's not kind of like rewording it though <laughs> i guess it's not inherently okay all right you know what <laughs> I'll uh, I'll admit you're right, <laughs> but anyways, that yeah. was one of my points were about race. Yeah. yeah, yes, definitely. Side note: Friends has no black or ethnic background people. Even you know, like we know, yeah. for sure they don't get a chance in the foreground. But if you listen, if you pay attention to the background, ain't no niggas in the background. <laughs> you know, what no, I mean? there's no, no. One. They, there even, was one. You're like damn, there was, friends. There was an Asian in season two. She was Ross's oh, girlfriend. Oh, legit? See, that, the fact yeah. that that's noteworthy is troublesome, you know? I know. She was like the only one. But then he left her for a white woman, so. Uh, as you do in Friends, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. He met so, another white you know. chick at jury duty, right? <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> that's what he ends up with. And that's, that's as much as it goes, really. And there was like one black person in season 10. Yeah. I told, my buddy, I told my buddy before I went on the pod, I was like, yo, I'm doing some pod. The topic is like Friends not being like diverse and all that. He's like, what are you talking about? What about Charlie or whatever his name is? He's yeah. a black dude in season eight. I'm like, he's just the one dude. <laughs> the that, one. Like, yeah, it really seemed like they like did focus groups. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Literally. Like by yeah. Season seven, they, it was pretty clear they needed more diversity. And then like, and they just auditioned season eight, yeah? I think they were like, you know what? We're almost done the show. We can't lose our followers. So what's, why don't we try something crazy? We need huh? one of these Negroes <laughs> yeah. in the final seasons. Yeah, get somebody hip and cool. Yeah, somebody that not too to jive with the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We don't want her threatening. <laughs> I want them courtside, not on the court. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got that? Thank you. Yeah. Start auditioning. But anyways, yo, so you are, uh, you're an actual Nigerian immigrant. Actually, it's funny because this is called the Immigrant Section Podcast. And uh, that was a lot of what I originally started doing was like talking to immigrants, their experience. Yeah. And it eventually just became kind of like, I would tell people come on the, it became more of like my podcast, you know what I mean? Right. With, yeah. without, uh, without a specific focus on immigrant this or that. But, you know, just how luck went, our cross, our paths crossed. And uh, yep. you're a Nigerian immigrant. You're actually born there too. And raised there twice and over. And raised there. You like, were you in English or were you in those like international schools? You got no accent. You you should have been like and raised there. <laughs> yeah, I could actually put it on. I I'm not going to. I love but I many. I bring it out here and there. You know, to scare people at the grocery store. What do you say? You know? <laughs> Hit me with it. No, like so. My sisters and I. Speak you are not a, social another, distancing. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's not bad, right? <laughs> that's not bad. That's a little generic though. That's like maybe South African uh, post apartheid kind you of. You are not. You are not social distancing. Show me your papers. <laughs> where are your papers? That's like half of any time I think of Africans, I think of someone and, yelling, where are your papers? <laughs> anytime the media thinks of Africans, they yeah. think about someone with that generic accent. Where are your papers? <laughs> yeah, just yelling. Just some random guy. So give um, me the backstory. Just like um, how you ended up here in Toronto podcasting. Yeah. So I was born in Nigeria and I lived there for 11 years. Um, and then after 11 years, my parents were like, I think that's enough. And then what, what, they, tri what, what uh, tribe? So I, I was born in the city. Like I was born in Lagos. Yeah. Um, and I lived there with my family for like 11 years, but my parents are both Yoruba and then my sisters and I both, all of us speak Yoruba. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll bust it out here and there again in the grocery store just to kind of uh, see how people will react. 
Yeah, um, for people who aren't in the know, Nigeria's got a bunch of tribes, different languages. Yeah, dialects. in case someone, in case you didn't know, which I do, yeah. but keep going. But also, in case you don't know, it's like the first <laughs> language of the country is English. But that's because someone wants to well, ask. We me, know, like, bro. I got emails from your cousin <laughs> saying he needed some <laughs> rape. All right, I'm just waiting on that email back. You know. <laughs> yeah, in case you miss it, any any princes have messaged you yet, or. A it's couple, so that's what I'm saying. Once you send, that's what I hate about Nigerians. Once you send them the money, you never hear back from them, you know? It's, it's like, so, what the fuck? I trusted you. I, if I, could I thought we were Africans. Nigerians. I know, yeah. but I feel like if I could, this is the way I see it. I'm like, and this is so sad. And I'm sorry to like that older lady who got duped. But the way I see it is I'm like, everyone has a hustle, right? Yeah. So if this is this person's hustle... They have to do what they have to do. I think it's actually a sign of intelligence that people can scam people. I'm going to get canceled for saying yeah, this. Spoken like a true Nigerian, you know? You know a lot <laughs> of your cousins are paying rent this way. Just let yeah. them do their... It's a business, okay? All right? He pays taxes. Everyone's got to hustle. But no, I'm totally kidding. That scam is bad. People should not do that. Um, so what happened yes. at 11? Your parents were like, let's dip? Yeah, they were like, this is, this is fun. So they were like, let's, let's leave. And they took myself and three of my two younger sisters and they moved us to the UK, which was a pit stop really, um, to Canada. So that's why I don't have an accent because I had a British accent. And so my Nigerian accent died that way. Oh, what was your impression? Yeah. Do you remember your first impression of uh, Britain when you got there? I remember like, and I don't know if this is factual, but I remember the other day I realized I was like, there's a huge chance the first time I saw a white person was when I was 11 at the airport. Damn, legit. Huh? not crazy. Yeah, like I'm like, there's a very big, tra- like, I don't know if that's factual. I don't actually know. Maybe I saw, you know, those missionaries, there will still be a couple of them running around trying to yeah, adopt me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. With a fucking um, arrow in their chest. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, is this one taken, you know, trying yeah, to adopt exactly. the child. Angelina was probably Jesus? there. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure Angelina was there with Brad. Like who's next? I want you know? that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that so, one. Do you have it in Louis Vuitton print? <laughs> oh no. We can have it arranged, Angelina. <laughs> Yeah, but I had parents and they're great. So they said, no, we'll keep her. Um, but yeah, that was it. So I had a British accent and then that's why I lost my Nigerian accent. And then when I moved from there to Canada, I'd just been here ever since at 13. Okay, it. so it was a two-year pit stop in UK. Two-year pit stop, that and was it. And you were in the school system. Yes. What was so, that like? So I've actually repeated two grades. So anyone who's like immigrated kind of understands the struggle. When I moved to the UK. Oh, I got put ahead. So I, I don't understand that at all. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. I was going to say, really? <laughs> I was like, oh. oh I was fast track. No, I, I, I don't relate at all. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, they like, I had to repeat, what was it? Grade seven. Yeah. And then I did grade seven, grade eight there. And then when I came here they were like ah. so i had to repeat grade eight again so i had to repeat like grades twice but the system was great like very smart people obviously all around it's been great but nothing obviously compared to nigeria because at like age 11 i was doing advanced functions so you know Damn. wait yeah, that's, that's when you're supposed to be doing it advanced functions is a grade <laughs> 11 course what are you doing? that was a summer it was for summer my parents were like oh what do we, we want to do something crazy this summer yeah. so you know what we should do advanced functions you're like yes. can i just do the regular ones yeah, no, 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 like, no, Glory, you got to do advanced. Who yeah. was this school? Did you get uh, embraced with open arms, like in this um, playground and all that kind of stuff? Do you remember it? No, that's the biggest. No, the thing is, like, was fine, right? My English was great. Like, there's there just point. an accent. Yeah, yeah there was like, an accent. I, there was just an accent. That was it. So in the UK, you get the like. Someone asked me, like, you know, how Simba? You know the stupid stuff that people ask you, like, oh, how's your how's your pet lion? Yeah. I, used to, I used to joke and say I prefer Mufasa, you know. Like, <laughs> okay. I don't know Simba, like his dad. Um, but that was as, as much of it. The shocking thing, though, I think, is when we moved to Canada, like everyone thinks, you know, the British accent was so, no, people hated it. And they would like make fun. And like, it was bad. Like When you moved to Canada? When I moved to Canada. Like people would think that'd be a less threatening accent because it's yeah. British. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. Maybe it's a black thing. I don't know. I've, I'm in Canada. I've met British people and, and we still ogle their, uh, their accent. accent. Yeah. Especially I know. women. They're like, oh, she's so hot. She's got a British accent. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know what your experience was. They're like, are you black or are you British? Pick one, <laughs> Glory. We don't have time for it. We're playing. Yeah. Much. People were confused. Like, and it's granted. Is. Yeah. And I was like, just like terrible. this loud kid. Yeah. And I was forward too. You know those ones? Like those, oh, the words. I didn't come shy. <laughs> <laughs> like some kids problem. are shy that exactly was, that was your problem that was my problem was loud, that i was like i was loud, loud. Yeah. exactly yeah. i was loud and proud 
some kids are shy. I was not shy. I was like, what are we all doing today? You know, that's like a, jokes. I was, I was the one that was like, I'm not different from you. And then like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd have to speak Arabic with my mom. So I'd go away in the corner somewhere. So people would <laughs> hear me speak yeah. Arabic. I'm like, ah, I'm not different. We're all white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to have like, sometimes in my, you know how like sometimes your, your mom will come pick you up and you know, they come as they are, you know, oh, they don't care. Yeah. I remember one day my mom came picking me up from school. This was in Canada. And I remember like my phone, had, I used to wait for her at the front, right? Because I was like, if my mom comes in, she's not the one. She doesn't play these games. Yeah. So I'd wait for her like right at the front, like out the window, like just like, because I didn't want her to wait one second. One day my phone died. So I decided to be a normal teenager and gallivant with my friends, run around. So I was like, oh, my mom, I hope my, one of my mom's here. It turns out she'd been waiting outside for like 10 minutes. So she, all I see is this, right? I see this like five foot two woman with yeah. a vengeance walking towards the school. You can feel it, yeah. I could feel it. She like comes in through the door and I remember I look at her and I do this. I was like, don't come in. Like, don't come in. And she's like, she's like yelling like, <laughs> I've been waiting for you. So then I like Don't wait for her to leave a bit and then I walk out and then I'm like, no one saw it. Like, I, I got away with it. And someone asked me on the way out, is that your mom? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then I left. And it was like a talk of the town. They're like, your mom came ready to beat you up in a scarf. Like, she just didn't care. That's so funny. And it was report card day. So as soon as you got in the car, she was like, where are your papers? (laughs) Show me your papers. (laughs) Yeah. And she was like, what's this uh, What's this foreign minus? What is the B plus? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. B. No, that was an F. A minus was like, what's this foreign minus in front of the A? We don't. How could you become a doctor this way? exactly <laughs> right like, like who's gonna be the did next they push you to be one of the the cliche because like i think we talked about this on your podcast and you may have some theories on this i've got, i know i've got my own nigerians are the most go get it successful african nations from they've got like the most uh commerce hub you know like besides like uh johannesburg and cairo right. you know yeah. what i mean like as far as like inland and like I guess it's not the most inland just because it's on the, the, what's it called? The West part of Africa. Right. But like, they've just got the most going on. It just, Nigeria seems to be leading the race in Africa. And like, they're all the doctors. They're all this, they're not just the scam people. They're also all the doctors, the lawyers. And like, yeah, I don't know what it is about Nigeria. What do you think it is? I I think it's that those are the only options you were given. (laughs) <laughs> growing up like I didn't understand that people could be like actors it was like this foreign thing or a fashion designer these were the options you've got doctor you've got lawyer that's like if you want to be a failure you can be a lawyer but there's really like doctor engineer and then if you must be the wild child you can be a lawyer that, those are kind of like the options you know yeah, like somehow worldwide the, uh, out of the most Africans who are immigrants established in a community somewhere I meet it's Nigerians you know what I mean sure. it'll be like Ireland or it could be uh, Minnesota, or it could be whatever. It'll be a Nigerian father with a strict, like, who's like, is doing well. Whereas Sudanese, whenever I meet Sudanese, it's always kind of like, we figure out, the Sudanese figure out how to, they want you to become, like the Sudanese uh, immigrants who come that are like already with families are a a lot less ambitious on average than the Nigerians. The the Nigerians who come, they still go hard to get their Nigerian like doctor's diploma accredited in the Canadian system. That fucks people up because it's like a five year, it's like a long process to make it. And people just go fuck that. They drive cabs and they never stop or whatever it is. But Nigeria, they break through always. I'm like, what is it about the Nigerians? My mom did. My mom was, uh, she was studying to be a nurse. And yeah. when she came to Canada, obviously, even though she studied in the UK and was like practicing, they were like, in the UK, Canadian. in the UK, they were like, Oh, we need Canadian experience. So she did it all over again. It's just like a thing Nigerians have. It's, I don't even know. Exactly. So I yeah, know. did it all over again is what they all have. Over again. Everyone gets hit with that, but it's so hard for other people to stomach it. They need, usually cause it's like the pressure of having a family mouse to feed immediately. You're right. Yeah. So they get, they get lost in the cab game, you know? I've no, seen totally. it happen a million times because the because you can get a lot of cash and like yeah. and still get the subsidies from the government because you're getting so much cash that on paper you're making nothing so you get the most child benefit that you get the most this 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 you can when live I very can. comfortably with the system as opposed to being like yo I'm gonna do the eighty hours and and redo residency while having four kids somehow no the Nigerians do it though and they then they do it though what the fuck. 
I don't know what it is. And obviously it's not everybody, but like most people I know, even in the US, you see like, oh, valedictorian gets into all Ivy Leagues. When I look at that name, I'm like, yeah, that person's Nigerian. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like. I could tell Ade Kumola or something like that. Like, I know those names. I'm like, yeah, this is a Nigerian child who never had a summer where they rode bikes, you know. Nigerian. They were doing advanced functions in, uh, in grade seven. I can guarantee you that. So then two know. years in UK and then you came to Canada. What was that like? Like the switch of being embraced like on the, on the playground in, Amer- in uh, UK versus Canada. Was there any difference? Did you feel less or more like taken in by the community of like? Peers? I think it was the same, honestly. Like yeah. obviously maybe probably Canada was better because my accent wasn't this. It wasn't as foreign because back uh. then it's like it's a different culture. So what I was seeing every day, I was like on the streets, like running up and down. Like there was just freedom. This is the nineties, early two thousands. So it was like, no one was, no one was kidnapping yet. Really? Like it wasn't that to the side of a playground and be like, "Mm, what are you guys learning in math right now? And you'd be like, we're learning division. And he wouldn't be arrested. You know what I mean? Like, he'd be like, tell me more about that. And that would be okay. Yeah. Even maybe he'd handle a kid or two, you know, and be gone. (laughs) And then it's yeah. just kind of like, well, that's rapey Steve. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wears yeah. red. Don't talk to him. Yeah, that was a different time. These days, you can't let your kids even talk to any strangers. Oh, you but can, was, dude. Even if a no. kid comes up to me in public, I start panicking. I'm like, is this a, <laughs> is this a trap? Like if, I, if a kid, I remember, see, I'm the pretty young, but like when I hit like 18, 20, and if a kid came up to me and was like, I'm lost and I need help. Now, like 10 years later, if a kid comes up to me, my first impression is like, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You yeah. Know, like my hands immediately go up. Totally. <laughs> like, you know, what back you then, what do you it would be what like, do you want? back then it'd be like, oh, where's your kid? I think she's at the neighbor's. You'd kneel back? Really oh, sure. come on, buddy. Let's hop on my back. You, you, you need a <laughs> piggyback? Come on, let's yeah. go find your mom. You know? Yeah, those, literally. So long to those days. It was a, that was a long wow. time. So yeah. yeah. Now, wow. I can not games. There was a, she gone. Those are all gone. But yeah, so it was probably a little better in Canada because it was like my English was, you know, cleaner. Yeah. Because yeah. British. But it was more or less the same. Either way, it was a foreign language that people didn't get. I was maybe less shell shocked because from Nigeria to the UK is pretty different. Yeah, you had that. They drive yeah. on the other side of the road. They wear their seatbelts. I'm like, what's this foreign thing? Their teeth people? are fucked. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I was like, literally, I was like, what's happening there? <laughs> you know, so that was that was a shell shock. And I was like much younger. Yeah. I a bunch of different races and different people. And we brought two of my friends. I had a white friend and a brown friend. And I was like, whoa, I'm like. A lot of brown people in uh, UK. A lot of brown people. Right? A lot mm-hmm. of brown people in UK. Same as Nigerians. We kind of find each other. Same as Brampton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Once again, the brown, yo, Nigerians are the Indians of Africa. That's yeah. really what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, literally. There's a lot of us and uh, we must be seen. But yeah, definitely Canada was slightly better, but it was more or less the same. Same stupid question, same xenophobia from people of what they don't know. Asking now, dumb questions. Now how long have you been in Canada now? Oh, let's do some quick math. I'm going to age myself. I'm not that old. One uh, too quick math. Yeah. See, Nigerians who are listening would be like upset because they would have done the math. But I'm sorry, I'm an art student. So, hey, uh, yeah, calm go. the fuck down. Go. Right yeah, I said 13 years, 13, okay. 14 years now. So you OK. So you've left. Uh, you've been out of Nigeria for 15, 16 years, right? Yeah. And uh, I haven't been back. You haven't been back. Oh, my God. That's crazy. You live. I know. I just got canceled and, and haven't been back. And do you know go back themselves? And you're like, my friends saying. Yeah, my parents go back. My youngest sister has been back. Yeah. I don't know why they chose her. Maybe because when she doesn't even remember living there. That girl was like five when we moved. So uh, my youngest it's funny, sister. funny. They always adopt the culture way more. She comes back in like all this clothes. Like yeah. you are missing your roots. <laughs> no, she hated it. She was like, there's <laughs> bugs there. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. She's like Snapchat yeah, I mean, didn't even connect. <laughs> yeah, literally. She's like, the internet was taking so long. <laughs> um, yeah, she wasn't a fan. But anyway, yeah, I haven't been back in 16 years. I don't even know what it looks like. People always tell me and I'm like, we don't know. It's foreign. Oh, you got to go back. What's I like want to. It's uh, not, Nigeria is secular, right? What do you mean? In what way? Like there's no like re- religion in government. The government's like democratic and like. 
I wouldn't say that, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not too sure. Like, I don't want to make a statement and have someone in the comments be like, that girl is fake. Yeah, trust but- me. Nobody, I, I make it very clear here. If you are here watching this, thinking that all this stuff is sourced information, you're retarded. <laughs> okay, all right? Like, these yeah, are just two people talking. We're just having a conversation. There is no on point sourced information here. These are all speculations, all opinions. Like if, All of them. I haven't like researched Someone's going to come and put the Wikipedia link. Like if you yeah. waste your time doing that, you need if to- If I get a DM, system. I'm awesome coming for you. I'm going to yeah, be like- Yeah, it's to- actually, I'm surprised you had trouble. I'm surprised you stumbled on that question as a Nigerian of 11 years. Yeah. I think though, I would guess that there's, there's the, it's a relatively religious country in general. So I can't imagine that it's that separate. I really I don't, don't think, think it's, a, so, it's but- not definitely not as religious. See, that's the thing. There's so many tribes in Nigeria. I know it's, I think that's, it's almost like a market economy. There's so many different people. You have right. to be accepting because in like Lagos or whatever, there's yeah. all the different ones, right? And right. it has to be peace. But yep. in Sudan, it, it's, it's uh, Sharia law. It's Islamic, in North Sudan now. But it's, right. it's Islamic law. So it's like, mm-hmm. we're all, it, whether you're Muslim or not, you're playing by Muslim rules. No, it's so true. it's like, that makes it, I feel like that is one of the reasons it's slow to develop. The country is so slow to develop. It's because there's this, uh, religion is so involved in like the way the country is governed. But right. as you see in Nigeria, there's so much separation and you have to just, in your home place, you have to be so much accepting with different people. I think that progresses the country way faster. That's why they've gotten out of Africa and planted themselves in legit pillar roles of society all over the world, more than anyone else that I've seen. Yeah. I think there's a lot of corruption in the government though, for sure. All of all the African Southeast, all those countries are like, and it's so sad because the potential is there. It always breaks my heart. I'm like, there's so much potential, especially in Nigeria. Like I think it's sick sick right now though, based on talking to my buddy Conrad, a comedian, like it's Nigerian comedian who lived there until he was 15. I think it's like, like the capital, it's, it's bumping. I mean, obviously not with really? COVID. Apparently, oh, do you hear what's happening right right now with COVID? How that it's 24, it? it's 24 hour lockdown apparently in Nigeria. 24 hour lockdown and you're given a couple of days to come out and grocery uh, shop or whatever. And oh, then, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then There's no way Nigerians are going to listen. Nigerians are naturally rebellious. But apparently, people. apparently what they're doing with the people getting caught on the street, they just opened up, they took a coliseum. And imagine just a gate. And if you get caught on the street oh, not no. abiding, they just throw you in there. You know, oh, they're giving God. you food or whatever, but you're just in a massive jail now, like the playing field of a college, of a like if state. Ever try that in the huh? Western world, people would just like, I, that could never fly here. There's so much like African countries get away with that. I'm like, that would never fly here. Yeah. Can you imagine just taking someone on the street and then just being like, no, they would just cry. Can you imagine this injustice? They'd yeah. be like protests everywhere. Liberals, non liberals. Right. It's crazy though. Together. That's yeah. why you got to go back to Nigeria. I want to. Yeah. I want to go back. I don't know when, but we were supposed to go last year and then my sister decided to get married. Like, can yeah. you imagine? Um, so we couldn't go. But she married a white guy? No, she didn't. A Nigerian. Oh, shit. What the fuck? The twist. You know what I mean? The twist. What a twist. <laughs> Those are my parents' prayers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, all the like all the people that come from like original countries and then they go, they have a weird v- vision of continuing that. Like I continue this bloodline in Nigerian, like preserve it. But it's almost <laughs> like it's the opposite. You've branched out. Everyone, every one of your family who stayed in Nigeria will continue that. Yeah, right. You so, have made I mean, it to a different country. It's almost your duty to branch out, get into that gene pool. Right? That's the way I think about it. No, I mean, it depends. I mean, honestly, they're, they're pretty chill with anybody, but I'm sure they're very happy. Because it's easy. Yeah, to I get a doctor, lawyer, engineer. You're good. He's an engineer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. There's the game, baby. Feel it. But, but he's also just like such a nice guy. Also, I'm surrounded by engineers, and every time I see that ring, I'm like, what cultish behavior? You don't is- know about that? You know about the ring. I do. My the sisters are engineers. And shit. Two of my sisters are engineers. They're always like, damn, what did you do? Back- did you just fuck up? You I got a pod? I'm an art student. <laughs> so you took art in school? No, like I art, took. Like fine no, art. No, 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 like no, you were no. painting and shit, cleaning brushes no. for extracurricular, like no. extra marks, cleaning brushes, like that type of lifestyle? No, my parents aren't that uh, free spirited. 
I what? took commun- I said my parents aren't that free spirited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I took uh, communication. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now you got a podcast. Now I have you. a podcast. Killing it with the communication too. By the way, if I could say anything up until this point, you have made the clearest of points. Okay. Like <laughs> you ace that degree. I could tell your communications on point. I did what? Well. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. It was a great program. I always tell people to do it, but if you're a Nigerian, every Nigerian always calls me. It's like, I have to talk to their parents. Like when they want to do that, they're like, but glory did it. And she seems normal. Communication. So it's like, yeah. And like, if someone wants to do communications, yeah. the kids would call me and then the parents would call me. They're like, oh, so tell me what it really yeah. is. Your life ruined. Tell exactly. Us the truth. Yeah, literally. Don't, like, send us some papers. What's how much <laughs> exactly are you making? You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. I was going to ask. As a communications uh, major who's new to the job field, job market, whatever you want to call it, what are, what are your options? Like, what is their entry level for you? Like, I think communications like- is like one of the most popular degrees you can get now because everybody wants to be an influencer and everybody wants to work with influencers. I thought you just had to be hot to be an influencer. I didn't realize that I had anything. To, I thought it was ass <laughs> shots, ass shots, close up of an, a bubble butt and a caption <laughs> saying, if you don't defeat it today, it won't be there to defeat tomorrow. Some bullshit like that. <laughs> I thought that's what it took to be an influencer. What? Something encouraging. Yeah. No, like if you want to like, it's just everyone wants marketing is different. There's influence marketing is the best it's ever been like this is kind of an exciting time to study communication people are hiring people to run their social media because they're understanding the importance of it now Mm -hmm. so it's like you can get a job for sure it's also very competitive because of that like you can get a job in marketing for sure um also marketing they hire marketing undergrads and communications undergrads are you guys all under the marketing umbrella yeah it's all under. i thought you'd be under english no, you'd be under communication. So under communication would be like marketing. Some schools differentiate where they will have like marketing programs. Uh-huh. Like my school didn't. I studied communicate, but this is also like in 2012. So. What school? Carlton. Carlton. Okay. Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah. What is it with Carlton? My Nigerian friend, he went to Carlton too. Every or Nigerian. University of Ottawa. I don't know what it is. They're all in Ottawa. No. Every Nigerian is in Ottawa. It's actually scary. It's Nigeria 2.0. Like London. And like they follow me everywhere. Yo, um, can you speak pidgin English? Ooh, I think so. Yeah. Hold on, let me think. Um, the way she they sit the uh, the overall, I can't really do. It. I'm well, not that good. saying the way she sits over there. The way, the way she they sit on the stool, it gets her CB. What get her CB? I think I think what I just said was good. She sits on the stool somehow. Like the way she sits on that chair is weird. I think I'm not sure. That's funny. I might have for just, those like, of you, Pidgin there. English is like Nigeria's English, which is like spoken in like the marketplace and all like yeah. street level conversations, right? Yeah, it's like broken. English. It's like patois for Jamaicans, kind of, if I'm allowed to say that. It's like kind of broken slangish sort of uh, English in that way. I had a, in the residence of uh, first year University of Waterloo, one of the guys on my floor was a Nigerian international student. Yeah. And he came from money. And like, I don't know what his dad did, but his dad refused to let him learn Pidgin English. Really? Yeah. That's he, probably fair. I was like, can you, when I learned what it was, I was like, can you speak it? He's like, I was not allowed to learn it. <laughs> like, Damn, son, you was high up, man. What is this guy, an yeah. aristocrat? That guy you will not private. learn this language that is beneath us. Yeah. He's a private school kid. You know those ones when yeah. you see them. Yeah. Now past the quail, right? They'd just be eating quail <laughs> yeah. all the time. Like Fresh Prince for Nigerians. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, literally. Butler, everything. <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing now with COVID? What's life like? Are you working remotely? Are you done? Are you laid no, off? No, I got fired. Ah, yeah. So yeah. you're on that Serb tip, huh? Yeah, so I'm um, shout yeah, out to Jeff. Yeah. Shout out to Serb. Shout out to the true doe hooking us up. My friend the other day said I'm on my Trudeau's. That's what she calls Serb. <laughs> she calls it the Trudeau's, the money. <laughs> Right, he's like sugar daddying all of Canada right now. Literally, you know I mean? he's a couple he of the bill, you yeah, know. Right, you, you know what I liked? I liked how before this whole shit went down, they're like, I don't know how to tell you this, Prime Minister, but I think you need to grow a beard. All right, we're losing a lot of respect. Maybe make it salt and pepper or something. A lot of a lot of shit is coming over the horizon, Prime Minister. Grow a beard. Literally, I, I love when uh, he gave when he first started giving those daily things. And he was in all Hollywood mode about it. When I watched that, I died laughing. When he was like, Canadians abroad, let me be clear. And then they do that, uh, that thumbs up. Yeah. And we thing. will get through this. Through this. 
return home, Canadians, immediately. Yeah. Let be, let uh, be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you said a little better than that. But he's like, look at my beard and return home. <laughs> yeah, there was that one scene of him like, like there was this was all over the internet. So yeah. people are bored. There was one scene of him like I think he ran his hands through his hair. Yeah, and that just went viral. People oh, so for sure. It, and they were like, "Oh, it looked like a Pantene Pro V commercial." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he came and said, speaking moistly, like the internet will find any content and run. Like they're running. It, with it didn't things. help that he came on the mic and was just like, "Lush." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's didn't. like, "I hate this word, but yeah. speaking moistly." <laughs> oh, <laughs> split ends. Yeah. Am I right? Speaking yeah. moistly. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. oh, I remember. I saw all that shit. Yeah, they went in on him for that. Yeah, they did. Was speaking moistly, or I forget what, it, what the, all the headlines were saying, but I just, it was in quotes. I'm like, oh, this nigga looks like he fucked up. And it's him like, <laughs> yeah. speaking moistly and how it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I didn't watch any of that stuff. Ever since I realized that 90% of news now is just COVID number updates, yeah. I just cut it I cut it off probably late March. May, I think more than 90%. April, like, done. I was like, yeah. no more. It's a lot. Did you hear there was a spike in Ontario like this past weekend? Of course there was a spike. Like, I know. I, I, was, I was at a car. I, was at a, I went to a, uh, get socks the other day and there was a car meetup where people meet in a parking <laughs> lot. Like, you know, Fast and the Fear style where they all line up in nice cars. Yeah. And there's like 50 people just mingling and talking. And I'm like, yo, I think I actually three or four days ago, I put an Instagram story saying, yo, Spike about to come. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Literally saying that. That's funny. It's so sunny. Of course. Everyone's yeah. acting like it's on that normal tip right now. I know. Canadians don't know how to act with sun. Like as soon as we see sun, we're like, we just, like can Everyone's like that. No, it's not a Canadian yeah. thing at all. It's a human thing. Unless you live in LA, then you're like, ah, it's sun. We see that all the time. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. In San Diego, all these places. But you do hear uh, Italy, July 3rd, Sorry, June third, opening back everything? up totally, and not only everything, but according to the radio that I heard earlier today, they're they're giving a uh, a subsidy. Excuse me, they're giving up subsidy for people to travel because it has such a bad rep and they took such a massive hit in tourism. They're right. saying if you come, we will sub subsidize one third of your travel costs. What if oh, you rent an Airbnb it. for three days? We'll pay for a day or whatever. However, it ends up actually looking money wise, right. but. They're actually, now is the cheapest time, probably. I don't know if we can even leave Canada as far as flights and outgoing and all that. I don't know what the policy is with that. But yeah. as far as incoming in Italy, they're desperate for tourism right now. I'm sure Europeans are going to somehow break that law and be like, we can do it. That's crazy, though. I don't even know. Even like all concerts and stuff are canceled. I was supposed to go to an Afro Nation in Portugal with my friends in July. Damn. And even that got canceled. Yeah. And they wouldn't give it, you know, Africans, they wouldn't give you the money back. Yeah. You know what they said? We will give you a few options of, uh, <laughs> like, they're going to try and change the date, right? Yeah. yeah. So at first they canceled it, like, basically at the last second. And then when they did cancel it, they were like, we're not going to give you your money back. You can either sell it or you can just come next year. We're like, even when COVID 2.0 kind of comes back, like nobody knows. Wait, what they actually worded like, so they said they're not even making it like they're not even rescheduling it. They just said we're keeping it. They did the reschedule. Money. No, they yeah. rescheduled. They just said you can either sell your ticket or you can just transfer your ticket to next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's, yeah. yeah they're like, let us be clear. There is no scenario where money is sent back. No. You know, they needed that money just to finance it. And now it's done. I know. <laughs> I know. I feel bad for them too. Cause I'm like, I get it for businesses. You understand why they're hesitant to give money back. Cause they're also losing money. Like it's just an unfortunate situation for everybody. Everyone's you know? dying. You see so Everyone's many like, dying. restaurants that are done. Cause you think yeah. about it. I was like, Oh, the government will bail them out. They'll give them money. They'll give them money. But if you have almost no come, if you, if you don't have a takeout style oriented place, yeah, you're just kind of bleeding money, you know? Yeah, no, it's true. Just to it's, keep I it because they're all on leases, right? Yeah, I used to work in commercial real estate. That's what I was working before COVID ended. Oh, so, I heard that we work in places like that are just about to crumble now done. because of all this. There's like, I heard that there may be another recession coming related to commercial real estate because this, the pandemic has shifted the mindset of so many corporations to, yeah. like, to suggest people actually work from home, to make working from home more normalized. Yeah, so all these like Legit? Yeah, Shopify made the announcement. Yeah, the Twitter as well. Facebook as well. Um, they've you, all jumped on that bandwagon. You are permanently, uh, we give you like permission to permanently work from home essentially, right? Yeah. 
basically. Which is crazy. And then we work in like places that rent that office spaces that are like, oh, yeah. yeah. We work was already, wasn't we work already like done? Did they already, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm a little late on that, but I, I just saw their banner the other day. Like, but like, yeah, they're definitely done now <laughs> because there's, how are you coming back from that? But they were like, they already sort of had a falling out. Cause there was this thing that came out about their owner mismanaging money and stuff. You know, the, you know how it goes. Yeah. I was watching a thing with business insider. So yeah, sad. Yeah. I know how yeah. it goes, but I'm actually in a, in a pretty cool state right now. Cause I got one more Serb check coming in comedy, stand up comedy in my, I've just accepted today on my way here. I was listening to some podcasts and it's, and I've comedy is always, at its lowest point in the summer. When it's nice outside to go outside, it's hard to get people to sit in a dark room and watch comedy, right? Right. When it's snowing and it's raining, comedy goes up, people want, right? That makes sense. Yeah. So right now, businesses are beginning to start. Sure as fuck not like get in a group and watch the stand-up, but like right. general business practices are going back to the way they are. But the summer being the lowest season, I don't know if comedy is even going to come back for the summer. And now I'm like moving forward with the idea that the next four months, comedy is not going to happen like in my mind and i'm like i can get any job because i don't do engineering anymore right and i just what I, happened with that how does how do your parents feel about you being a comedian oh that's a good question but you know what's funny it was like very scary for them you know obviously because i did the engineering and i worked in the engineering and i was like involved with helping finances at home and stuff for so long right that jumping off of that like cliff in their minds was like oh what are we doing now you know what i mean yeah. But it all went away as soon as I did a McDonald's billboard. How funny <laughs> is that? A thing that has nothing to do with stand-up comedy at all. McDonald's, I, I auditioned for some commercial and they wanted to use a black face to sell their new spicy chicken. They did not say that on the cast. No, of course not. But that's okay. but, but it's funny how everyone's worries go away right when they can see a billboard and be like yeah that's my yeah. son or that's my friend or whatever it is right something all to send back home. questions disappeared when i yeah. when i got that billboard that is but so funny. all they need to see was that just some sort of proof that like whoa there's a possibility outside of the thing we know wow yeah. that's actually so funny i don't think my parents would care if it was the billboard they'd still be like what about all that money we spent on your degree well i told yeah, yeah right i mean i I paid it off. So I paid for my own. Oh, schooling. Okay. I paid for my uh, own schooling. Right. But yeah. so no one could hold that over my head. But at the same time, it feels like a sunk cost. You have that sunk cost bias. Like, Oh, I don't want right. to waste this, but that's stupid. I didn't enjoy doing it. I did it for years right. and I truly did not enjoy. And when I first started doing open mics comedy, I'm like, Oh, now I know not only right. that I didn't want to do this, but I know the thing I would do want to do. Right. Yeah. What engineering were you doing before? I was working for a mechanical engineering company, but I was, I have a nanotechnology engineering degree. Whoa. Yeah. Pretty sick name. Right? You're like really smart. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's yeah. like the degree, right? But oh, <laughs> it's gar It's a long story, but it was like the, the, it's almost like it's getting just a very impressive degree that has no, there's nowhere for you to go as far as a job. Right. You like know? it's not a clear path it's kind too of thing. advanced. They mm. made an undergraduate of something too advanced. So you would never get hired as an undergraduate doing this advanced thing. They'd want an expert or someone Oof. who has master or graduate level courses in that thing. So it's right. like they're putting you out and totally fucked. You get, you kind of getting fucked. Everybody was jumping ship out of this program at some point, but I did it. I thankfully I got a hookup because all job market is hookups. Yeah. You know, the whole job market is so I've never I've only once gotten a job like in my engineering by career, applying. Applying blindly yeah. with a resume. But I got the hookup, I got the job. Uh did that for some years, then switched to comedy and it's been way better. But I supplement my income with like emceeing weddings and random shit like right. that. Comedy, yeah. Acting whenever it comes in. I rarely book, but when it does, yeah. Uh, it's like a little boost, pay you a month's rent or two months' rent, right? Right. But, but that's not gonna happen. So I was doing comedy, emceeing, a little acting, all that, plus doing some deliveries. COVID hits, all that stops. Right. I'm on Serb. I'm happy. I'm serving. Now one Serb left. And comedy's like I said, now I'm under the assumption comedy will not start till September. So right. I'm, like, I'm right at the cusp of being like, what do I want to do? Like get a, I think any random job that is willing to hire me for four months. So I'm actually kind of excited. I'm like, I could... 
I could be a security guard for a museum a night shift. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? For a, yeah. For like for a little while. I mean, obviously I'd have to do a certification or some next shit. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Instead of actually doing it, I'm not actually going to do it. Yeah. But like I could do any random thing because I don't really care. Like I'm not, my goal is not to make a ton of money. I'm just trying to pay mm-hmm. my rent and keep making my content and then comments right. back up and everything starts back up. Wow. That, I heard they were like expanding Serb though. I hope that's true. Serb, you get four. You get four of them, right? As of right now. So they, they have periods going all the way from March to like August or September. You can qualify for Serb, but you can only right. get four disbursements of Serb. 8,000, each one 2,000. You can only get 8,000. So maybe they'll extend it to 10 or to 12. Right, but depending. Like, I'm bored, you know? Mm. I'm kind of like... I'm at the point where it's like, you have so much time on your hand. What are you really doing? You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, may, or maybe I'll find like a, a like cash part-time thing and serve right. it at the same cash. time. I don't, yeah. I mean, it's not like the CRA is listening to this podcast. And if they do, obviously that's yeah. a joke. Yeah. Obviously that's a joke <laughs> to any CRA officials say. out there. Obviously that's a joke, but I don't need to work full-time. And I just bored. There's a lot of time. I could do all my creative stuff. And then yeah. I'm just like, what am I watching now? You know? What there are could you watching? Be f- I'm watching all this stuff. You know, right okay. now I just rewatch Shrek. You know, I, you, you're on Netflix, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. You know, Netflix does that new thing where they're like, these are the top 10 things in Canada right now. <laughs> yes. Which is really just trying to funnel you into watching number one, two, or three, right? Yeah, literally. I'm like, who actually knows what the number 10 is? Nobody. Ex- exactly. Or even yeah. knows if the number one is the number one. It's this is true. almost them setting up with, these are the 10 things you should be watching because we all have a herd mentality, right? Yeah. No, number one is always conveniently a Netflix production. Yeah, or, like or a new movie they added. Like one time it was like Deadpool 2 is the number one most watched thing in Canada right now. Right. I'm like, that's because you're telling everybody that number one thing is Deadpool. So yeah, everyone's, everyone's watching like, it. I guess I'll watch one? Deadpool 2 again, right? Yeah. I was literally about to click it. And then I realized the only reason I was doing it is because it was number one. Yeah. And I'm like, this is a great thing, but it's like, great I'm marketing. already watching enough, you know? I'm already watching yeah. enough. I just watched, finished season one of Money Heist. Oh, great show. Watch Money Heist. Ah, <gasps> oh, but that, that pilot was so sick. And I was like, sick, it's going to go at this pace. Yeah. And then that I first, it. and it slows down and I made it through the first season. And that first episode of the second season just took me out of the show. I oh, could tell, no, you have I could to tell that it was slowing down even more. No, it picks up. Like, it gets very interesting. So yeah, the first keep going. They're kind of like, I would keep going. The keep first going. two seasons are kind of like the same. And then there's like a break. And then there's now they're on season four. And then the next three, two seasons are kind of like the same. So they kind of do them like, uh, yeah, I, heard, I understand what you're saying. It's like a day or whatever, or three days yeah. like so long. I hate when they do the thing That's where they're like, change. and then, and then Moscow knew that this would be the last attempt he had to do that thing. And he felt <laughs> this way because his son was always this. I'm like, stop doing that thing. Yeah. Like at the beginning, you'd be like, and this is what Moscow said. And then as it went on, it would just, give you so much like narrative and like right. narration. I'm like, fuck at to emotional stuff. Yeah. I'm like, just rob the fucking thing. Leave <laughs> with the money. It's been months. I've been watching this shit. Leave with the money. Why do you no, need 2.8 so billion? Just leave with the billion, you know, no, they're like, get out of there. Cool. Yeah. It's a great show though. I, I get what you're saying. It does. That first me. season pissed me off with the professor. Like what kind of insane motherfucker is this? That's trying to live on the edge, like dating this chick and like running <laughs> back, picking up phone calls. Like, are you insane? Why are you jeopardizing this whole thing? I thought it was a metaphor. I was like, that's literally what it's like dating in 2020 online dating. I was like, is that not what it is? You meet somebody and you think they're relatively normal. They turn out to be the head of a like robbery ring. Like that's yeah. scary. I just hated how it was like, he's so smart and he yeah. figured out this whole thing, every detail planned for, prepared, but then he's being so fucking sloppy with this thing. And I get it. It's like love, romance. It's not as yeah. logical as blah, blah, blah. But no, okay. The shit that you prepared for, when he told them like, we're going to learn the, the fucking like vascular system of the body in case you need to operate on one another if you have that capacity to teach this group of people that don't get involved with the detective yeah don't don't be trying to meet her grandma and shit like that like what are you doing that's the whole reason he got almost caught the whole reason because he kept coming close in the bar and being like how's how's the case going i heard that get the fuck away from there you idiot you're winning 
But he's not thinking clearly because he's in love. That's the thing. It'll confuse you. Like, that yeah. shit will get you messed up. That's what I, it is. The dude's confused. I heard he didn't do well, huh? I heard in Spain, Money Heist was a flop. And then Netflix went and, like, put it in their international catalog and just, like, breathed life into this whole into production. It. And they're all yeah. huge people, like, stars now. The Money Heist people, there were nobody when it came out in Spain, apparently. It flopped, apparently. Obviously, because I don't think Spain's going to be like, yeah, let's run the show that teaches people how to rob the Royal Mint. Like, I don't think they're going to be for it. I can see the government trying to like look for the... I don't country. think it was that. I don't think it was like... I would like think the so. government being like, don't know. Spain is like very first world and like liberal in that sense. It was more like, yo, we don't fuck with this show. This is like, yeah. maybe they're <laughs> yeah. like, what's with all this narration? <laughs> you know, why is this cocksucker so close to this lady while being so proficient on this end? It doesn't line <laughs> yeah. up. Maybe that's why it didn't work. I know it's crazy, but maybe. Yeah. Somehow I'm like, I wonder if doctors are watching this. Like this guy's teaching people how to operate. Like what is happening? I'm sure it's not as simple as they make it seem. You know, some people are stupid. They'll watch that stuff. They'll be like, okay, they could do it on that show. It's like Grey's Anatomy fans. Have you ever met Grey's Anatomy fans who are like no. obsessed with the show? No. You should hear the shit they say. I'm like, you're not a doctor. What? You know like, my be sister like, just give them 12 fan. cc's of this or what yeah I, my sister's a Grey's Anatomy fan so if someone's sick or something she'll be like oh they did this on the show here's what you should do I'm like on the show like this That's is so funny. Web MD. Grey's Anatomy fans are WebMD in real life like they're problematic great I never got into Grey's Anatomy but I watched a bunch of House did you ever watch House no I didn't I didn't watch House is that House a, annoyed me eventually too because it was always the same like um for 24 this, hours Right? Huh? That's that same one. It's like the same thing for 24 hours. No, it's always like the same story, the same thing. Something, somebody would come in with some sort of condition or situation that's like very challenging. They don't know what the fuck to do. And then the last five or 10 minutes of the show, Dr. House, the main guy who's like a, he's like the Simon Cowell of these shows. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In, f in the last five or 10 minutes, there's always a serendipitous, like, aha uh -huh moment. Like, he's in an elevator and he sees a fly. And he'll be right. like, flies, wings, wing, wingil, kazir, badingada, badingada. This is, and then he'll learn, he'll blow up the whole case and he'll run in and he'll tell them exactly what to do. And they're like, what, what do you mean? And he'll like, just do it, man. And then it ends up saving his life. And he'll, he'll explain what it is. Every episode was like that. I was like, was he like a racist yeah. trope? Is that no, what no, no, like? he wasn't racist at all. But I'm saying, they would struggle with the problem for 40 minutes, assuming it's an hour show in real life, right. 48 minutes, 40 yeah. minutes struggling with a problem. And then the last little bit, he would cross the street and a kid would fall. And the way the kid would get up, he would be like, oh, he got up. Getting up is this. We just, we just have to pick up the patient. And he runs back and goes, lift him up. And they're like, what do you mean? He goes, just lift the man up. You know, like that. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound like a show I want to watch. It's sick, but you see that formula 12 times or whatever. You're like, oh, okay. You get tired. I'm, I'm out of this. Yeah. yeah. I'm done with this. But I know your main thing, which I'm assuming is your main thing. That's why you had that podcast is friends, right? I mean, it's not my main thing. Not, I think I've had to bump it for the office now, which was a long time coming. But basically, yeah, I still love friends, even though I bashed it on my podcast. You know how people have messaged me? Yeah, I never liked that show anyway. <laughs> people make me It's all white girls, basically, yeah. what you said. Yeah, it's all white girls, right? Just virtue signaling. <laughs> yeah. That's Literally, so funny. Yeah, I've always like... You know, white lives. My That's favorite. why I always ask for Seinfeld box sets only because like <laughs> yeah. friends is like, it just doesn't have that inclusive vibe, you know? Yeah. Like they're like power to the people, man. Yeah, I've yeah. always hated that show. I'm like, have you? I was like, I never said I hated it. I still love it. You can like the show. Oh, they're like, oh, okay. Oh, I love yeah, yeah. They're like, like, oh, okay, yeah. oh, they breathe easy. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Like, yeah, it's my favorite <laughs> fucking show. It's my favorite thing on TV. Yeah, it's so funny. The amount of people who've watched it message me like, I never liked that show. I'm like, didn't you though? Okay. <laughs> whatever it's sick though <laughs> it's sick when people how many episodes have you done on your podcast it's uh it's 20 something pod right what it's how did that get going pod. anyways okay so first question i think technically i've done 14 episodes but right now there's 10 episodes because like i used to host on this other platform and i won't say it so you don't get sued and nobody is gonna <laughs> sue did you hear that cra thing we did earlier i'm not worried about getting sued who is it listen it's soundcloud isn't it those cocksuckers they never respond <laughs> no it isn't they would <laughs> no yeah, i emailed they, them in the night they okay. kicked me off after like a certain like after a bit they're like okay that's what it. what yeah. Say it. trust me it this, like a, i'm on episode 55 this is episode 55 you know how much 
wild and out people have come on and said this and that like crazy thing yeah nothing happens but what what platform and why'd they kick you off okay so is this platform called spreaker and i don't know about it there you go that's why nobody fucks (laughs) with you spreaker exactly kicking people off your shit you got four people on it and you're clearly listening to all their content okay (laughs) you're never gonna scale sorry keep going they're like this one's a little edgy let's just delete it um no so i had like i had technically 14 episodes they were like my host right so it's like you host and then they distribute to all the mains and they deleted the first four episodes um because I don't even know. It's probably my fault. Something about, I think they sent me an email and they said something like, you need to pay something or whatever. <laughs> and I probably took too long. Yeah. And then they just started chop. It was like torture. They started chopping off my episodes one at a time. What? So I lost the first four episodes. So right now so I what say, was like, said? Did you say what was said? What was said? Like, what did they say to me? What was the problem? What was the thing they weren't cool with? I think they just wanted me to pay like money or something. Like they give you limited amount of hours for you to put your podcast on. So I guess I had reached my max. It's like a, it's like a pay phone. So they wanted me to add like an extra 25 cents to continue this call. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe I took too long and they started literally, they started one by one. First episode chopped. I was like, these people were like, and then again, second episode, it was very scary. I'm like, what is this, Watergate? It's kind of, it's kind of freaky. That's some mafia shit right there. Yeah, like, I'm what like, that's that? Our servers uh, keep losing your episodes. Our servers seem to happen to lose an episode every 24 hours. Isn't that funny? If you should so happen to have 14 hours. <laughs> yeah. You are like, send, everything. You're like, send oh. Send money to this account. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On a separate note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, literally. And then it just, it's like chopping off an arm. Yeah, Took password, my first episode. <laughs> password is organized crime, all one word. Yeah. yeah. Then they send me an email after being like, your first episode's deleted. To save the rest, yeah. send money to this yeah. undisclosed account. <laughs> Good like, news. What? Your other, we find the other episodes. We yeah. put them back up. So we'll it's go. gone. My I first so four bad. episodes are gone. That so, little yeah. Italian thing I just did kind of trekked into Nigerian a little yeah. bit. More. Like, okay. I keep doing it. Every time I do an accent, it eventually becomes something else, something way different. At least you can do an accent. I can only do the two accents that I've had, so I can't do an accent. Like, it's a cop-off. I tried to do Australian, but it's not very good. Yeah, me too. I'll do it English, becomes it becomes Australian. Australian yeah. becomes <laughs> something I don't even know. Right? Yeah, it's like just South like African. Yeah. Oi! You know, like you just say all the slurs. Like, yeah. Literally, yeah. Then go eat the baby. Yeah. Just We're going to those... get a shrimp on the Bobby. Like, you know. Is that from Cast or not Castaway? Forrest Gump? Like I've never thing? seen that movie. Get on that. You got some. You got some work to do. It, it's on that, Netflix. <laughs> have you ever run into a, another black person who's so shocked that you didn't watch like some very cultural, like important movie and they give you like black homework? Yes. Like the first time when I said I haven't watched Love and Basketball. Oh, so I, I haven't watched- even seen that. Oh, fuck it. You're doing it to oh. me now. You're doing it to me. This is so meta. Shame. Yo, that's Game of Thrones shame. Yo, you should watch Love and Basketball. Damn. You have to. You this have to. Poetic watch- justice, white man can't jump. It's all the same movie, sounds like it. Love and yeah, Basketball. Yeah, it's that kind you of vibe. Is? Yeah, it's two basketball players. They grew up together and they like go through all this thing. And she's tomboy and he's popular and blah, 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 blah. And they both play They ball. fall for the same girl. No, they're both like, it's a guy, girl. Basketball. Oh, player. okay, okay. Yeah. Do so they fall love, for each other? Exactly. Is so like s- basketball. Oh, damn, yo. That's like layered and shit, yo. <laughs> That's like he got game meeting the notebook or some shit right there. Yeah, it's a great movie, though. Like, I'd actually recommend. I read these two black dudes came to do a comedy show at Comedy Bar one time, and they came from the States. Uh, Not to do the show. They were in town, and they got up on the show. And they're, like, military dudes, right? Like, these these dudes are, like, late 30s, ex-army, like, big southern black dudes, right? And they're, like, loud, too. Like, like they'd be the barbershop. You know, like, barbershop with Cedric the Entertainer? They'd be in the back, like, and then I don't nigger. "Ah, ah," You know, like, that's it. That character, two of those dudes. And then they go proceed to finding out that I didn't watch New Jack City or do the right thing, like Spike Lee original oh, movies. They're like, they, man, you ever see that? They're like, man, you got... They literally like put it on me. They, they shamed the fuck out of me. They're like, you don't know. know black culture. You're not even technically black until you watch those movies, apparently. Apparently. But I was like, I'm not from this country. That's always my argument. Same you know? here, I'm like, right? I'm not from this country. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what you guys were watching at six. Like, you don't know what I, what I was watching? I was outside running with the neighbor's dog. What were you doing? You know, they're like, I have, I did not come from this country either. Now show me your papers. <laughs> <laughs> I always 
make fun of my friends who are African and uh, like born here. Like that's like my go-to joke with them. Like they'll say something and I'll like Canadians, you know, and they're like, we're the same as you. I'm like, I don't know about that. You're I'm like, you guys were born though. here and it shows. <laughs> yeah. Do you still have your language down pretty good? The Uruguay, whatever? Yeah, I always call it, I always say I'm freak, like I'm uh, fluent. Like I'm like, I'm fluent, but I'm not, but I'm pretty good. Like I can understand it very yeah. well. That's that, that I'll warn you. That's the one thing. I'm the same. My Arabic, I understand a lot more than I speak it. And I speak it, nah, I speak it okay. Yeah. Pretty bad, but like I'm embarrassed by it a lot of times if I have to speak. I understand what's being said. But when you go to back to Nigeria, they're going to go in on you for that. Oh, I know. Yeah, even that's, even that's... Even when that's, relatives call. They call you like, Canada girl. They're going to yeah, call like, you, oh, Canada girl. Forgot where she's from or whatever. They'll call you like Onyibo or Ajabota. Like they'll be like, oh, look at this uh, white girl. It's like Onyibo is like white, yeah. white person. The most annoying thing my cousins would do anytime I went to the market in Sudan and I bought something, anything, flip flops, fucking pants, whatever. They'd always be like, they'd always ask me how much I paid for it. And then like, ah, <laughs> Rashok, Rashok. They tricked you. They tricked you. <laughs> all of them. Ah, Rashok. <laughs> yeah. Fucking all. Or, so I would say that I bought it for 30, whatever. And they'd be like, how much you get it for? I'd be like 20. They're like, ah, Rashok. Oh like, my no God. matter what you say, they're going to say you got tricked. You've been back then since you like left? Oh, yeah. I used to go back like every five years for like oh, wow. three months, four months, the whole like grade school summer. How did the, oh, okay, for summer. I was like, didn't you, didn't you go to school? We'd leave a little early. We'd leave like a week before like school's done in like May or whatever. Right. Or June. And then we'd stay till like early September. Wow. We'd stay the whole time. Yeah. But the last time I went was like 2009, 2010. So like 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. So you don't even know what it's like right now. Oh yeah, definitely. It's Sudan. It doesn't change that often. Some roads are going to be paved. They're going to have a new 5G cell phone tower and then for the most yeah. part. Everything is going to be the same, you know? Do same people ever question, cars. Do people ever question if you're black? Yeah, I do videos about it, you know? Like, it'll be yeah. like, um, it's weird. Some people will say like, oh, I thought you were Saudi. Yeah. Like, and Saudis vary in complexion so much, so I don't really know what that means. Um, uh, some, I, I, one time I met this Lebanese girl who was so annoying. She literally kept, every time I, like, she said it in the most insulting way, but like when I told her what I was, she'd be like, you don't even look Sudanese. Oh my God. <laughs> she kept saying it like that. I'm like, what the fuck is your deal? Fuck off. You don't even look, oh, you don't even look. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yo, back off. You the worst vibes possible. Like, yeah, I used to get, I remember one time I used to, uh, and then she asked me for to... cocaine right after that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you have coke though? You don't even look Sudanese. Do you have coke? <laughs> oh my gosh. No, bitch. Yeah, I remember one time I was, uh, I used to do, I used to sell like credit cards at the gas station. Yeah. Um, you know, those people who come up to you when trying to pump your gas in peace. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people. So it was like a summer job. So I remember I went and I was trying to get this guy like to like sign up for this credit card and like in like in reference, like he was trying to like flirt with me or whatever. So he's yeah. like, Oh, where are you from? And it's the same ish. I was born in Nigeria, moved to Uganda, and he's always like, "Wow, you don't look African," which I swear they think is a con like people. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. people, you right? It's so annoying. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, but I am, so that's an yeah. insult. You really, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. insulted me. Yeah, but you don't even okay. look it though. Yeah, and I was like, "What do I look?" Listen to his biggest boost of 2020. When was this? 2014. He's like, "You, you're like kind of like Brazilian." I was like, "You realize." And he was like, oh, yeah, like trying to put one on me. I was like, you're so stupid. And I just walked away. Like, you don't need to buy his credit card. It's okay. And that was it. But people always think they're complimenting you. It's like, that's actually So insult. backwards. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm like, you realize you're like, oh, you don't look this because you're usually not attractive or yeah. whatever you're trying to say. But it's I actually sick. That. I like it because it's immediately like, it shows you, it's so insightful into the person in, yeah. like, in like one statement they make. It shows you yeah. so much about <laughs> that. And like <laughs> their approach that it's, it's just hilarious. It's like, wow, yeah. you suck. <laughs> yeah. Like don't literally even like, look at, you don't even look at. Yeah. Oh, they make this face like, really? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm like, yeah, really? You know, yeah. my parents, but growing up, it was like that all the time. But back then growing up, you didn't want to be African because it wasn't cool. Oh yeah. Trust me. I was yeah. all there. I just wanted to be the same. I just, I did. I didn't want any talk of cultures or difference or anything to come up. I just wanted to be the same. 
I don't even remember what I was trying to be. I was probably trying to be Jamaican. Everybody was like in the GTA. You grew you up know? in Toronto, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like in the in GTA. London. It's like 85, oh, 90% white. Oh, you yeah. really wanted to be the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like Pop Tarts too, guys. <laughs> What'd you do? Yeah. They'll be like, what'd you do this weekend? I was at the cottage. What'd you do this weekend? Oh, I was forced to memorize Quran in an Ethiopian man's game. <laughs> you guys want to go play soccer now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did like, you ever like not want friends to come over? Were you allowed to have people oh, come Oh, yeah. Over? I never. That was my joke. If you actually, g- people that I grew up with, and I have friends who listen to this from London, uh, my g- old friends who have hit me up and I know they listen to it. I was the guy who never had people over. I would have like other Sudanese people over who were like in the know of like the refugee situation. But yeah. I was so weirded out. I, I, I was so afraid of judgment because my mom would always have bukhur, which is like incense, hard incense, not just like nice light stick. It'd be like, right. it'd be like these wooden blocks that are being steamed in the house. When you open the door, clouds pour out. Okay. And there's always Quran playing in the background. Like... <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and it's like always in the back. Clouds coming out. If friends came over, I would step outside and quickly close the door behind me. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> so I was. They were known for like, oh, you can't go. No, no one's been to a boss's house. Like that's so funny. My parents always want people to come over, but they didn't want us at people's houses. But it was risky. Like you never know what your mom could be cooking. You don't want people asking you questions. Like it's funny when you're older, you embrace that kind of stuff. You embrace yeah. the difference. But at the time, I was so scared. I was like, if they see what I eat. They're going to think I'm weird. They're going to think I'm fucked. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if they come over, they're not going to be my friends anymore. Like I was yeah. that trying to like be that. Separate? Uh, yeah. I was trying to fit into that degree. I was so obsessed with what they thought because when you're raised super religious, you're constantly worried about what people think. Right. You know, because a lot of yeah. the shit you'll be like, do this, this, what will people think? Do this. Right. That. You know, you're, that's like drilled into you. So then that carries over to general anxiety and all your, all your other shit. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Social life, everything. You're just worried. Oh, what are they thinking? I think that that's one of the things that makes you like one of the planting the seeds for becoming a comedian is like early obsession with what people think. A lot of people have no, very little anxiety. They have like self-confidence. They don't need people to laugh at them. They're very comfortable. They don't need any sort of thing that any work that's generally acknowledged to feel uh, realized. Right. But comedians are the opposite, right? We mm. come up so much trying to figure out exactly what people think and how to be funny. Like, what's the thing that's going to make everybody laugh right now? Right. And, you know what I mean? Like, le- that mindset, that a lot of it, I actually attribute to being raised really religious. Like, really I was religious. raised like, my well, I, my family's Christian, so... Yeah. I, I say religious. Imagine. It's open to anything. Just how stringent mm-hmm. you guys stick to the playbook. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. That's like like my, mom would be, my mom would knock on the door sometimes be like, make sure you're sitting down when you pee. Okay. Cause in, in Islam, it, you're not supposed to stand while you pee. I actually what? learned. I, yeah. You have to crouch. While, so sit, whether you're going number one or two, you're supposed to be on that seat. You're not supposed to stand to pee. Okay. That's crazy. And, and when I was young, they told me if you stand to pee when you're, when you're a kid, uh, oh, sorry, when you die, a snake will wrap up, will wrap your body up and tight <laughs> in the grave. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want that snake to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're dead. So it's, I don't know why it was a, so much of a concern at the time, but it's like, there's all these sayings. I don't know if it's religion or culture or what it is, right, but it is. just so aggressive rules left and right. But parents used to tell you stuff just to like get you to do what they wanted. Like, my mom used to say, like, oh, if you keep, because I used to suck my thumb as a child. So she's yeah. like, if you keep sucking your thumb, it's just going to stretch. And then one day, it's, it's, you're going to have, like, a giant thumb. And I was like, oh, my mom's smart. So I should probably not suck my thumb anymore. But now as an adult, I'm like, hmm, that's probably a lie. They yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> I love how you still are not 100% sure. Yeah. Like, I still have to research that. that. Yeah. Because you know how it is. There's still a part of you that would be like, I'm, I'm sure there's some truth to this, even though you know it's like a lie and not true. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like it's fear, You're like, my parents yeah. are total liars, right? <laughs> Literally, every, every immigrant, like it's like you're conditioned. So to separate that from like that mindset of what you grew up in at home and like what the world says, like logic, you're, it's confusion. Do, are people surprised now that you're an immigrant if you tell them you're an immigrant? Yeah, and you, it's still do get, you give the vibe of like first generation. And I do too. I, People are surprised I was born somewhere else. Yeah. 
And it's still insulting. Like my friends, even my friends. I'm not too insulted by that because you've adopted the man, like the lingo to the f- point that you sound like you did JK and SK here. You sound yeah. like you were born here. So I don't find it insulting. And I, don't, mean I don't think well. it was a compliment, but. It's insulting when it's like, it depends on how it's phrased. Like, yeah, exa- right? same like we were talking yeah. earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it oh, literally depends on how they phrase wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't even like, tell. Oh, wow. You, you speak. Like, I remember one time I used to work. I work. I still work at this gym, so I'm not going to say it. It's like a big gym in Ottawa. Yeah. I feel like you not- live in Ottawa? I live in Ottawa, yeah. I thought you lived in Toronto. No, I live in Ottawa. I went there for school and I stayed. I'm That's so, so funny. I've been making these Toronto references. The, so, oh, okay, so you grew up here. Yeah. You, yeah, okay. So yes. you've got all the Nigerian friends. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't. Wow. Wow. That's what they're going to be in the though. comments about. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be like, it's because no she hasn't been back yeah. since for 15 years. She has yeah, not been back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> for 15 years, she has not been back. Yeah. She has literally. forgotten her roots. Someone's going to be like, I know your parents. I'm messaging them now. I'm sure my cousin <laughs> I somehow. I love that Nigerian accent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What were you saying? Sorry, I cut you off. No, it's so good. Um, I was just saying it depends on how people phrase those things. Like even my friends now, they'll always be like, wow, I forget like you weren't like born here. And they mean well, so that one's not offensive. But I remember once I was at this, I was where I work at the gym. Uh, I remember this lady came up to me and she was like, just talking. She was racist. So, you know, but, and she's like, Actually, as she, they do. Yeah. And like, I'm not just like speculating. Like she called me the N word. Like she was racist. At the gym? Yeah. That's why I can't Damn. say the gym's name. How did that happen? Because she like referred to me like, go get that like girl, you know? Whoa. Like, she said yeah, nigger like, girl? Yeah. <laughs> no one says ni- Not even KKK people say nigger girl. What? I you just burst say nigger. You know, why add girl? Why humanize yeah. it a little bit? You know? No, I know. Because she was like, folk, go get that. And she what? was like, oh, complimenting me because she loved my service or whatever. So she was like, oh, I want her to help me. <laughs> I burst out laughing. That was so funny. Was she an old white lady? Yeah, she was like an old white lady. People try to hide me from her too. Every time she'd come in, I used to wonder. Like, they'd be like, oh, gl- Glory, go to the uh, back to get this thing. And I'm like, they just don't want to meet this white woman. One day, people weren't quick enough. So she came up to me and she just started asking me questions like, where are you from? Da, da, da. You know how they always compliment you? Like, wow, you have such an exotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always white these people. words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like these words that they think that's are That's so with. different. Wow, that's such an yeah. exciting background. Yeah, tell me more. Your last name is so exciting. Cool. <laughs> and exotic. Oh, when I have braids, they're like, yeah. your hair, how do you get it to be braided? You know, and they're like, I wish I could do it. I'm like, do you? Anyway, this woman comes up to me. She's just talking to me. Da, 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 da. And then she goes like, she's like, wow, I'm, I'm so shocked that you weren't born here. You know, you speak so well. And I was like, English is the first language in Nigeria. Like, I've always spoken English. Like, Because she literally was like, oh, when did you learn English? I said at age one, I think. <laughs> like, like, I spoke it growing up. But people yeah. don't. In those cases, it's offensive. If you're trying to be like, oh, you're, you don't sound like you're from Africa. I'm like, what do they sound like? Yeah, a lot of these countries speak English first. Yeah, but people are just like ignorant to that stuff. But yeah, you get a bunch of those. Someone once thought my little sister was Japanese, you know? She got just, that look? No, she's black. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah. Even she's like, yeah, she, 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 does she have that like Cambodian, Lao black thing no, going? Where no, she's like couldn't. the darkest of us. Like she's like black. Like she's yeah. black. I don't, we still don't like get Vietnamese, it. Like really. Vietnamese, like a dark Filipino. They get dark, <laughs> no. you know? No, someone once told me, like, this might be offensive. Actually, I wouldn't say it in case it offends Asians. Uh, who can say it? Dude, what did the person say like, to you? Someone said, like, Filipinos are the black people of Asia. Yeah, like, that's generally known. That's why they, <laughs> they sing and dance better than any other Asians. They yeah. sing, I would say that, they sing and dance better than anyone else around. How is that not the blackest thing ever? If you make yeah. Filipinos, they're loud, they're funny. The Filipinos are always, like, in a cookout mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same as black people. Black people. Yeah, so, like people not over. necessarily, but like I'm saying, like so similar. That's not offensive. I think that I think that's true as fuck. Yeah. I mean, it, you never know. Someone might be like, "We're not the same." But yeah, crazy. I've yet to meet a Filipino who can't moonwalk. Okay, that's not black. I don't know. <laughs> no, not MJ. Oof. But let's not get there. MJ was black. His version one was black, and we got to consider version one. His version MJ eight one. software was white woman, but. <laughs> it's okay his music's good so we'll leave it there sometimes yeah. i blast 
uh, off the wall, like on the streets. I'm like, yeah, I'm still listening to him. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The song, I'm just looking outside, like super defensive. Like the songs are good though, right? Yeah. The banger, I don't think he, right? I don't think he was canceled though. I think of all the cancelees. He's not really been that canceled. I'd actually make a claim for that. R. Kelly's canceled, Bill Cosby, awkward. Kanye West is even relatively canceled. But I'd say Michael Jackson's not as canceled, like from yeah. what I've seen. I've never seen someone successfully have Thriller turned off somewhere. You <laughs> yeah. Know what I mean? Can you turn yeah. that off? He, he touched boys. Can you please turn off that best song of all time? <laughs> yeah. I Meanwhile, yeah. like when I go to parties, if people play like Step in the Name of Love, the DJ will play it and look around. To see if people are going to be like, turn that off. Which Who did that one again? R. Kelly or? That was R. Kelly, yeah. R. Kelly, oh yeah. I believe I can play. He's ruined the song. I'm like, so well, sad. It, remix Ignition is the best shit out there. Now, I usually I don't do this dance. But. But that's the best. <laughs> now I'm not trying to be in a dune. You, you have to listen to it in shame. Like, secretly. Yeah, at yeah home. exactly. I say, I don't. Home. For Michael Jackson, I don't. But yeah, R. Kelly, you got to do. He is. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of do with R. Kelly. But you know what? Honestly, Gloria, I think that's a, that's a good ending point. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, all right? <laughs> that shame is definitely warranted for R. Kelly music. But Ignition, yeah. Remix Ignition is still hot as fuck. And you just got to figure it. Those are the moral questions that keep you up at night, you know? It's true. Why is R. Kelly canceled, but MJ is not? Because there are so many chicks who grew up and can recount it, his abuse explicitly. You know, Very there's a whole, you. like, team of victims that are, like, more than willing to speak in documentary format. That's why. And yeah, then everything apparently, about Michael Jackson is hush-hush, and it's like... No, there were guys who spoke out against him. I know the Finding Neverland or whatever. But yeah, that's I so weird, that. dude. It's just the weird vibes, the parents. It's all weird. But when yeah. you have 50 old women that no. were, like, statutory <laughs> my daughter R. Kelly... Yeah. Yeah. The thing he took me or took my daughter. That's hard to just be like, yeah, but bounce, bounce, bounce. Remember <laughs> that? Yeah, it's hard. But yeah. what are you going to do, though? What are you yeah. going to do? I wonder how, I wonder who's got bangers right now on the billboard that's been fucking up. And only time will tell what that's really. <laughs> Doja the Cat. Yo, have you not seen Twitter? No. What so I don't know what's Doja actually, Cat? I don't know the details, but my yeah. friends in our group chat yesterday, apparently she's like, on, in, she's on Twitter right now. And I guess she's in these chat rooms yeah. where she allows people to like, I think call her the N word or something. And she's like half black. It's this whole thing. And she's kind of like weird. She's like trying to be sexual like in these chat rooms. Yeah. Yeah. But she like joins these chat and she's like pretty famous. So she like joins these chat rooms and people think she's doing it for attention from like men who appear to be like racist. Like, I don't know. I haven't really read into it, but she's like on par with being canceled right now. Like, damn. The, yeah. It's pretty bad. That doesn't sound like a cancelable thing, to be honest. Just because, I don't know. Because I, I like that her new album, that, that track, Say So, I Bump It. I don't know. I don't know if you get canceled for... That's some online stuff. People never rarely get canceled for that weird online stuff. It's in-person yeah. atrocities that make the masses go, fuck that person, you know? Yeah. They're online no. and they're like in blackface online. That shit appeared. Look at Trudeau. That I just, was about to say. <laughs> that came and went, right? Twice. But he if did he it. did that re now... In a thing, and he got like, in a thing, he's like at a party right now. Well, then that would ruin him, right? Oh, people like, still These online Kevin things Hart. come and go. Oh, no, but like Kevin Hart almost got canceled for things yeah. he said years ago. But that, like, that was just because of the Oscars, him hosting the Oscars. It only came to light when the haters wanted to take him out, when he was like, oh, I'm going to host the Oscars. And then it came to light. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help that he's like cheated on two women. So, like, it's yeah, and then that gets layered. Yeah, but that's like what? So that's relationship stuff. That's him no, and them, and it's like, how? Who are we to judge people for stuff like that? We don't know I what know. their relationships like. We don't know any of that shit. Like, he yeah. cheated. We don't know the details at all, right? No, but if you tweet some hateful shit or in his shit some like gay jokes that went awry, I thought they were. I totally get them, but I get the climate. Uh, climb the climate right now wouldn't allow for that to go like slip by but it did yeah. at the end of the day the oscars are passed covid trump took over the news covid yep. took over the news like that's it that, always passes that, that came and went right you think but kanye should be did not that thing that came and went many <laughs> times but one bad documentary hit this nigga's in jail right i don't think so He's i don't think jail. he is yet i think he they asked the, all of the top people all of those like celebrities in prison right now i think requested to be released for covid and all that <laughs> Oh, wouldn't it be sick if COVID killed Cosby? 
That'd be a pretty sick way to go out. No, that's he's bad. He's going to just die in prison in the next couple of years, probably. The man's dead. I think dead. he's actually going to stay it. Like, you really think he's going to stay there for the rest of I mean, as life. far as I'm, he's between hospitals. The man's at the end of the road, you know? I but know, but like... All of, all of this shame from a lifetime of, like, love and being, like, revered, all of this shame, it yeah, poison in the body. It kills you. Being, no, that's true. Being publicly known as this rapist, just his yeah. interactions and everything, and probably still probably has like a bubble around him that's positive and stuff like that. But that will slowly kill you. Now you're fighting, staying out of prison, trying to play yeah. all these legal games, and like trying to die in a hospital and maybe die in house arrest. Maybe he's like, where am I going to die comfortably now? Yeah, he might even choose it. He might just. That's what I'm saying. That's the way to go out. We'd be like, "Damn, Cosby took COVID, took him out. COVID cleaned up. COVID." I was telling people is like deleting the cache and history on your browser. It just clears it up. He's just clearing out all that old, unused stuff. You know, in humanity. It's so bad. Someone the other day, he was like, I'm not going to mention him. He's so horrible, but he's a good person. He tries. He was like, honestly, the world, he's like, we needed a new plague anyway. That was what he said. I was like, that's not even funny. He was like, honestly, we needed a new. Yeah. Hello? New plague. Like, so if it had to be COVID, I was like, well, can you not hear me? Yeah, no, you just you said the internet connection. It's good now. It's good. Oh, Okay. I was going to say, it didn't want me to drag my friend for saying that we needed a new plague. I think this is our war. This is yeah. our war for sure. People are, this is the hardest thing we've had to endure. And now we see that things are finite. You see lines. When you see a line, a long line outside a grocery store, you really yeah. put you and put the thing into perspective how good we had it. Just like four yeah. months ago, you know? Yeah. But, I saw like I said. Photo the other day that was like, this dog was like being, he yeah. was okay. He was doing the social distancing. And I was like, well, yeah. it's a new world. Even the dogs are adhering to it. Yeah, I was like, he was waiting patiently for his turn, and I was like, yeah, the world's changed forever. <laughs> Do your part, stay apart. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yo, Glory, this has been amazing. Please tell everybody where to find your podcast. I know you dip that platform. I don't know what the fuck you're on now. I'm assuming you're on Spotify and Apple and all that shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can find the podcast on Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Any other works you want to mention or anything like that? I don't know. It's it's your time. No, just go with the podcast. It's at 20 something pod. My thumbnail is a, it's a cartoon yellow girl that's in a messy room. Um, Yeah. I I always include the link in the description and I know I have it in your bio on Instagram. So I'll include that Uh, for people on my end. If you're listening on Apple, yo, five stars, leave a review, say something nice, tell your friends about it. Click that follow button on Spotify. YouTube videos come out on Wednesday. Remember that full episode, some clips, and if I can get to it. But Instagram, I put the clips up on Instagram. And just check my shit out. Tell you people about the immigrant section. Let's grow it. I appreciate y'all for listening. Glory, I appreciate you for coming on and trying out the Zoom thing, which I'm actually pretty comfortable with. Now that this work, if this works out, like on yeah. after this with the export and all that shit, yeah. then, uh, I'll probably do a lot more of these. Yeah. I appreciate it. And when all this passes, you should come do it in person. We'll do yeah. it. It'll be sick. Okay. Yeah. And then All I right. can like, really be uninhibited. I'll come with wine, you know? Yeah. Okay. Do it. <laughs> come with wine. You know, we'll go right back on sp- Splitter, whatever the fuck that platform is. Right? Yeah. No, we'll I'm off right though. I went on. somewhere else. They okay. can't, four episodes. They just chopped it off. No, they didn't care at all. What like, are they called again? Uh, it's Spreaker. That was hey, the. Hey, Spreaker. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah. All right, Glory. Thanks for coming on. As always, thanks for listening. Peace. Bye. Bye now.